Uh, welcome to this week's Give Voice to Your Vision, where we stop the spinning wheel and we get real so it is clarity you feel. I am very excited to talk about how to sell without selling with my friend, colleague, mentor, client, brilliant sales trainer, master sales trainer, Jane Gary in the house, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I am thrilled to have her with us today to talk about how to sell without selling. So many people in the, my world, coaches, healers, brilliant experts, visionaries, healers that have you know superpowers, really so struggle around selling and making offers. That's one of the, I'm going to say that is the main reason people's businesses don't take off. In order to have a business, you could decide right now, I'm going to have a real business and then just act accordingly. And that means you need to have people to talk to, you know, have conversations and have some of those conversations leading to people signing up. That's what Jane is brilliant at. I'm going to tell you a little bit about her experience, but to introduce her, and we're going to jump into this interview style training today. Are you as excited as I am, Jane? I am. So you know I love talking about this stuff. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Jane uh, works with clients to create selling strategies and master that one-on-one -on -one sales conversation and to help selling be fun. Is that possible? Are we blowing your mind already? Jane is going to talk to, uh, about exactly how sh we can shift that relationship to selling and uh, share some of her secrets, some of the myths of selling. She's got an amazing gift to share with you today. So I'm so glad you're here. If you are here, let us know in the comments that you are here and uh, we will make sure that we're on several different platforms. I will always make sure that your questions get answered and that we come back and circle around to make sure you get the resources that we provide. So welcome, welcome, Jane Gary. Yay. Thank you, Michelle. I'm so excited to be here. And you know, this is, this is just one of those topics I know you and I both geek out on. And it's, it's just <laughs> fun to talk about. It is. And, you know, imagine that for me, the relationship to selling and making offers I've come like a long, long way because I wouldn't even be having the conversation. I had a business for 20 years that barely eked by because I didn't decide to have a real business. I was like, well, I'm going to try and get a few clients and see what happens. Right. And I didn't have any clue about the selling conversation, nor that inside job around embracing it. So I am so excited to share. If you're here, I see folks are jumping in. Let us know that you're here. Share in the comments wherever you are. I'm going to do my best to look over on my other screen and navigate some of the technology so Jane can share her brilliance with you today. Um, I would love for you to just jump in. Like, how do we fall in love with sales? What's yeah, that how about? We, yeah, how do we fall in love with sales? Exactly. What is that about? So... <laughs> First thing that I always like to address is selling isn't what everybody thinks that it is. And this is coming up more and more in the world as more people are moving into business ownership or they're just wanting to up level their their job, whatever that might be, because sales conversations are really necessary. So here's what selling isn't. It isn't pushing. It isn't pitching. It, it isn't um, pestering people. It's none of those things. And so the first thing I always say to everybody is, this is what selling is. Selling is changing the world one person at a time, one conversation at a time. And inherently in there, things don't change if you're pushing people, if you're pitching, if you've got a one-way agenda, if, you, if there's this pressure. That is, that's actually not a sales conversation. It's, I don't know what that is, but that is not a sales conversation. And I keep, and I'm a little bit on a rant today because I've been involved. Oh, go. Oh, your rants are brilliant. Yeah, Buckle up, take phone. your notebooks, everybody. She's on fire. Yeah, okay. I got to tell you, I've been attending a lot of things recently where it's, it's the concept of uh, so, social selling or outreach. And when people say, hey, Michelle, I'd like to learn more about your thing that you do. That Sorry. Sudden, what happened? There was a little tech, technology delay. Sorry about that. Go on. I'm listening. Okay. So if I stick up my hand and say, hi, Michelle, I'd like to learn more about your business, increasing my visibility, voice your vision, you know, all of that. 
that all of a sudden that's a sale. That's not a sale. That's a connection. You, so number one, we're dealing in kind of some bizarre other world where the minute somebody puts their hand up and says, I'd like to have a conversation with you. I, I keep hearing people go, Oh, breathe a big sigh of relief because you don't have to sell. What? <laughs> that's a conversation. I don't know where this is coming from. So that's, that's not even a myth. I'm not even there yet. I'm just, I'm, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just reframe because I'm so fired up about that. So that is not a sell. That is somebody wanting to engage with you for exploratory purposes. That's what that is. Otherwise known as you've just entered into uh, da, 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 a sales conversation. So I just want to, I want to kind of get everybody on the same page with me. So that's the first thing. The second- I love that. I love that so much. And you know what? It reminds me of too, Jane, that we need to embrace the whole notion of selling, including being sold too. Yep. So if we have a lot of judgment and I got some people that are all up in my messenger box being yes. like, you want more leads, you want more of this. And I'm like, you know what? In the past, I, I get a little bit tired of it because I want to help them do it better. <laughs> but you know what? I If I let go of that judgment and they have every right to do it, however they do, learn their way, do their way. Um, and then I am. it's more easy for me to show up and serve like you're saying. So brilliant. Yeah. I love that. Thank you. Yeah. You got you to gotta be okay with you're, you're so right. And I mean, you go down so many rabbit holes today, but that's something else that happens too, is people will say, I just hate being sold to. And I think, well, what, what does that mean? And then they usually describe people are reaching out to me. People are calling me. <laughs> like, well, They're trying to engage you in a conversation to determine whether or not you'd be a good fit for each other. Yes. And you find that offensive. Yes. yes. And you're a business Perfect. owner. Yes. How do you get business? I talked well, about, well, now I'm offended, you know, <laughs> Are we going to be offended or are we going to not? You know, you have, you can't, you can't be on one side of that fence or another. So there's nothing wrong with sales. So I'll, I'll say it again. Selling is a noble profession because it changes the world one person at a time, one conversation at a time. And in fact, if you look up the definition of selling in the dictionary, what it says is the exchange of products, goods, or services for another product products goods or services so if i have something and you have something and we decide to switch all <laughs> has just been made so why people freak out about sales i would say i don't know but i do know so yeah. can i start with the first myth because this is i love it yes absolutely yeah. jump right in we've got three sales myths get your notebooks handy we've got denise is here hi denise i know uh that nancy is here and uh, nancy walsh is here and uh, susan butler are here hi ladies if you give Streamyard permission to know who you are i can show you and we can and we can see you in the comments too and that so. would be so awesome because otherwise i feel like i'm having a peter brady party <laughs> Dating myself. Well, all right. All right. So Ryan was here and he said he can't wait for us to get started. Yeah, Ryan, and this is, awesome. I'll let you know. This is Christine Baumgartner. She's saying hi. Oh, hi, yes. Christine. Yeah. Hi, Christine. Denise is here. Hello from LA. And uh, this is Susan Butler. She's here too. Hello. Hello. Okay. All right. So we are not alone. <laughs> we are not alone. We're not having a Peter Brady party. Besides which, yeah. I'm a party all by myself. That's so. right. I say the same thing. I bring the party everywhere I go. It's just, you know, it's more fun if people are there. 100%. So why have people freaked out about sales or why do they freak out about selling? Well, we're moving into the first myth, which is, here's the myth, always be closing closing right closing. yeah except that's wrong so we're going to just release that from here on forward just whoop magic yeah. wand you're done with that so it is a myth that you always want to be closing what yeah if, because what if they're not your right client of course what if they're not your right client what if you don't want to work with them what if they don't have a problem that you can't solve what if they have a problem that you can solve that you don't want to solve it for whatever reason so always be closing is a myth and it's a, the most dangerous one, in my opinion, because this is what creates that pressure. This is the old coffee is for closers mentality. There are no bad leads, only bad salespeople. All this kind of archaical nonsense that's been, that's been going on, right? I mean, it just stresses me out to hear that. And I grew up in a bad bullpen environment where we were banging out calls. So I grew up with that energy. And what I realized 12 years ago when I started show stopping sales is that needed to go away. 
It just needs to go away. So the myth is that you should always be closing. Here's your reframe on that. You should always be opening. Because when you open a safe space and a safe container, when you open a dialogue, right, Michelle's breathing now, we can go to our Zen place. When you open that kind of truly harmonious space where this positive, let me see if we're going to be a good fit, exploration, that kind of energy comes through, you really don't have to worry about the closing. And your sales call that you have to close turns into this incredibly delicious, warm, rich exchange between two human beings who are simply trying to find out if it would make sense for them to work together and go forward in a relationship together. And make no mistake, especially in the coaching and consulting industry, we are in relationship with each other. So can I, you know, can I, can I hear it for, for the people in the back room? So the myth is always be closing. We're releasing that. And your reframe now is always be opening. And so if you're here and you're a healer or you're a coach, you're in this transformation experience and you just want to coach people, you just want to help them transform, the sales conversation is the beginning of that transformation potentially, or your marketing and your messaging and your visibility is the beginning. And how does it feel to always be opening instead of always be closing, right? And if, you, if that's a takeaway for you, be sure you comment wherever, whichever platform you're watching on. Um, I love that reframe. Yeah. I love it. For the healers, that's such a that's such a great example because I was having some weird back foot issues about two months ago, and I was in Tampa at the time, and I went to a chiropractor. And guess what the chiropractor does? He he opens you. Yeah. So when I was on the table, when I was in the chair, I'm like, I'm in pain, you know. And it is that contracting energy. And he was saying, Well, go like this. Don't like this. Go like this. And then we were, you know, my hip flexor is like, move your knee out. So we were. He was opening he was creating an opening and that was a much more natural way of being so it's the same thing in a sales conversation when you can get somebody to open that's a much more natural way of being their defenses aren't up you aren't creating a bunch of unnecessary pressure and you actually can have a conversation so powerful and that's what we want that's what transformation is right it's a softening it's an opening we have to open to it that's brilliant jane i love that yeah. What else you got for me? We got three of these myths. <laughs> yeah. All right. We better go. keep writing, ladies and gentlemen. If you've got questions, post them in the comments because she's she's bringing the full uh, interview style training forward. Yeah. Okay. So one last thing on the myth about being closed or always be closing, which we're reframing now to always be opening. Your job, <laughs> get your pencils, hear me on this. Your job is not to close somebody. Your job is not to enroll somebody. And I know right now you're going, well, wait a minute, then I'm not going to have any money and I'm not going to have paid clients and then I'm not going to have a business. That is correct. But hear me on this. It's a matter of restructuring your thinking and your language about it. If you go in with the intention to close, if you go in with the intention to enroll, you're bypassing the process that actually needs to take place so you can determine if this would make sense and you can go forward with this person in partnership. I did not say go into a conversation and not care whether or not somebody becomes your client. I also did not say you don't need the money. Yeah, of course. So yes. So we need to define what closing and enrolling means. So here's how I define it. If closing and enrolling me, me enrolling means somebody is going to invest in themselves through me, then I need to close and I need to enroll. It's how I'm going to serve people. It's how my clients are going to get what they need. And it's how I'm going to have a business that's profitable. So yes, enrolling and closing is necessary, but it's not what you think. And I just want you to change your mindset and your language around it. So we already talked about the mindset. You should be opening, not closing. Now let's talk about new language. Your job is not to close. I don't want you ever again to look at your calendar or pick up the phone and do this. I really hope Michelle signs with me. I really hope I get that. I really need the money. I really need this client. I'd love to work with her. I want it's it's like this weird place of desperation. So that's what happens when you show up feeling like I am on the hook to close. I am on the hook to enroll. This has to happen for all the reasons that it has to happen. Your new mission is to realize that your goal as a business owner slash salesperson is to be an excellent 
facilitator and guide for your prospective client and take them on a journey so they can get to their truth. That's what you're there to do. And that's how you serve them. No closing, get them to their truth. How do you do it? Series of six questions. We can't go into all of that today, but I teach this to my clients all the time. All you need are six words and you are going to be able to have that kind of conversation as a facilitator and a guide and have plenty of things to talk about them too. Here's the deal with the truth. Yeah. Go, you go ahead. Yeah. So why do you want to get somebody to the truth? This to me is really the essence of a sales conversation. Really, this is the essence of any conversation where you're really looking to have two people communicate and exchange and have an exchange of humanity is really what I would say. And so and here it is. Transformation coaching. That's we. So many people say, I just want to do the work that I want to do. I don't want to have to market. I don't want to be visible. I don't want to have to sell people stuff. And you're saying it's the same thing. Write that down, kids. Go on, Jane. It's the same thing. You just need a different mindset. You need different language. And then you, your, your heart's already there. If you're on this call, I can guarantee you your heart's already there. It's the same heart Michelle has. It's the same heart I have. It's we're not people aren't paychecks. Don't treat them like that. My clients hear me say that all the time. We are here to serve and we are here to get people to the truth. That's how we serve them. So here's the deal on the truth. When somebody speaks their truth, they hear it. When they hear it, mm -hmm. they feel it. and when you feel the truth, you own it. And it's in the moment of ownership of the truth that any of us decide to do something about it. Sometimes the decision is I'm choosing to do nothing. That will happen. Sometimes it's, I can't do this anymore in this state, the way that I've been doing it, something has to change. But until the truth is told, that change actually will not happen because the decision isn't going to come. I love that. And you're helping people to get clear. You're helping people to make a decision. You're helping people to know what's, you know, what they want. You're helping people to invest in themselves. You're holding the space, right? That's so much of what we do in the Dare to Soar to Six Years and Beyond, right? We, I'm holding a safe place to land and giving people an opportunity to expand. And that's what this conversation is uh, with your brilliant reframes. I love it, Jane. Is there one more myth that we're going to talk about so far today? Or, yes, this, or so that's still the first one? <laughs> that was the first one. That's the longest one. My name is always it. And it's most, and it's foundational, right? So already share, yeah, yeah. yeah share your takeaways uh, of what's been valuable so far. That's going to help more people get yeah. value, more people tune in, and uh, it lets us know that you're here and you're picking up what we're putting down. Uh, so is this valuable? We, what do we have, Jane? We have not closing. We're opening. Always be opening, yeah. right? Uh, super powerful, and the power of. Um, holding this space for people to make a decision, right? To believe in themselves, to invest in themselves, to get clear. So good. So, I mean, don't, who doesn't want to do that? Yeah. Doesn't that just feel better? If you just yeah. look at calendar and go, oh, okay, really? This is, this is great. I'm going to have these beautiful conversations where I'm going to facilitate people to get to their truth. And we'll see what happens from there. I love that. Donna Joy says, I gotta, I gotta close this deal. <laughs> right. Donna Joy's here. Hi, Donna Joy. She says she likes opening rather than closing. Yeah. So yeah. much. So I love much. it too. I love it too. And th I think this is Christine. I'm trying to figure out who's commenting where. Yeah. Um, oh, no, that's Crystal. Crystal says, speaking my language, feminine empowered closing. Yo, Crystal. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Um, I love it. All right, Jane, what else you got for us? All right. Myth number two. Myth number two is everyone should get an offer. No. This again creates artificial stress for you and for your prospects. So think of it like this. Imagine if you had a restaurant that served the world's best hamburgers. So apologies to anybody out there who doesn't eat meat, but you'll see why in a second. It's actually, this, this is why this is so important. So you have the world's best hamburger making restaurant and you're trying and you're trying to sell things and you're trying to make everybody an offer and come into the store and get the hamburger and we're giving out free hamburgers on Wednesday. Whatever your deal is, you've got hamburgers. That is the thing that you sell. And it's not going so well. And in fact, the town that you're in, you're starting to get a bad reputation because people are saying, Michelle is that pushy hamburger lady. Why doesn't she just leave us alone? And Michelle's thinking, I've been in three other markets. I have the world's best hamburger. Everybody knows this. What are they not getting? And then Michelle does a little bit further data research, which she should have done in the beginning. And she finds out that she's in a town with a hundred mile radius where everybody's vegan. <laughs> 
Now, what is wrong with these people? No, of course not. not. No, not at all. It's not a good fit. These people should never have gotten an offer. And what has happened is Michelle is feeling very frustrated. She's starting to lose self-esteem. She's starting to question if she's going to be able to make it. She's starting to wonder if she's wrong or she's bad or her hamburgers aren't any good. So she's internalizing everything, saying, what is the problem? And the problem is the vegans are going, why did she not get why we don't eat meat? We just, we're not going to do it. We're never going to buy from her. So what happens is you just, you set up this, this detente, right? This antagonistic situation where Michelle's can, why aren't they getting it? And the townspeople are going, who is this lady? You know, so it perpetuates that fear of being pushy, yeah. fear of being silly, salesy, and it also feels off and we can internalize it. And it also, if I, what if I'm so good at it? You know, people like me, they want to work with me. They yeah. think I'm shiny. A lot, so a lady told me last week that I was sparkly, <laughs> right? So yeah. if I'm sparkly and that vegan buys my hamburger, they're going to get mad at me and be disappointed yeah. in my services. And they're not going to like me. And they're going to say mean things about me on Yelp. Because I sold them a hamburger, right? You talked them into it. You talked them into yeah. it. Yeah. They felt pressured in the moment. So here's the revision on that myth. Only work with people, otherwise known as only give offers to people who are a good fit that you want to work with. So people who will love you, who you will love back. People who have the problem and you have the solution. And that you are the best person to solve their problem. So there's a lot more that goes around that. But for today, what I just want you to, to remember is only work with people that you know you have the solution to their problem. You believe you're the best person to provide that solution. And you're going to not cringe every time they land in your email inbox or on your phone because life's too short to deal with that. I love it. Terry B is here. We have two Terry's uh, in our uh, Dare to Soar to Six Figures and Beyond. Terry B is here from Montana. Jane's got the right internalization when someone does not want my hamburger in the vegan world. Yes. Hi, Terry. So glad you're here. Jo just backtracking also, Donna Joy says she loves the truth in the language. It's so powerful, Jane. Thank you. Yeah. Um, no hamburgers for vegans. Check. So there's a discernment process. <laughs> Right. There's a discernment right. process. They get to discern and you get to discern. Right. Um, right. And it's so right. easy to feel like um, I need to get better at selling and I need to get better. And, you know, and, and sometimes we need to get better at having a conversation. So super excited yeah, to be here. We must support each other, because now imagine if you're frustrated and you're not understanding, you're going to push harder. And so what, what and what does that mean? You're now trying to close. Because you don't understand what is wrong with these people. Why can't they say, let me say it more forcefully. Let me say it louder. Let me say it faster. Let me say it again. And all of that is just creating that internal pressure. If you are trying to close, you are frustrated and you want clients. And they're just going to continue to back up. So... And I think it's so great for us for you for you've given permission, like this whole concept, this permission to to really be listening. Any yeah. transformation process to really be listening. This is an opportunity for them to answer some powerful questions that yeah. are going to help them have new levels of awareness to and it's to, an to get to the truth. And it's an opportunity for listen. So if I'm so, I mean, and I know when I first started, the whole concept of selling used to blow my mind. And I, and I felt like I had to be like ready to handle their objections. And I had to ask the right questions in the right way. And I, and I had to like, you know, I was very worried about uh, feeling salesy and then not knowing how not to feel salesy. And it felt very bold, especially making that first $20,000 offer or that first $45,000 offer. For me, it was 6,000 and then 12,000. And, and like to understand the value of that, it was so charged and I got so up in my head. Um, sadly, I hadn't met you yet. <laughs> that came a little bit later, but all in divine timing. Um, I love this. I think that Imagine you. Like you were just I dream of genie, weren't you? Totally yeah. dating ourselves here, right? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, no, that's bewitched. Um, okay, so our last our last myth is great. you need to be great at explaining what you do. This happens all the time, and the reason is it's a, it's an okay. It's everything's always kind of okay, and we just want to look at the reasons behind things. That's that's uh, something else I want you to think about in a sales conversation and with yourself. So. The reason that you are you think you have to get really good at explaining what it is that you do is because you're so passionate about it. 
you are passionate about the process because you got the certification and you did the education piece and you have been studying this and you have been implementing this and you have been living this and it just feels so good and you want everybody to know if they just knew how to do the thing that will get them the results that they will see the light and they will say i'd love to here's my credit card but the problem is <coughs> nobody really cares what you do and they care even less how you do it <coughs> take a drink i'm gonna say it again while you're swallowing nobody cares how you do it <laughs> they <laughs> <stop. Get> real. <laughs> nobody cares what you do and they care less about how it happens what god bless them that does not mean that it's not freaking amazing what you do and how it happens is brilliant yes yeah yeah what they really care about though is here's how i say it nobody cares how awesome you are and you are awesome so that's always your baseline you're awesome but people really don't care how awesome you are what they're interested in is how awesome you can make them that's what they're looking for from you that's what's important to them so you need to be great at explaining what you do is very problematic because you're going to get lost in the weeds with them and they're going to go i don't know what what um i don't have enough money do I get and how does it work and that sounds hard and yeah. how much is it and and then they hear this then you're going to hear this well what do you think uh sounds good i don't have enough money mm, maybe but not for me right now that might be true i'm not saying that doesn't happen but a lot of times people say that when they're overwhelmed and they don't understand what it is that they're actually getting. So the perception of the value just isn't there for them because you've told them all about the process and you haven't actually told them about the transformation that is going to take place. One of my one of my favorite clients, she is a psychotherapist licensed. She's had a very successful business for years. And when she and I first started working together, she was um, over the six figure mark, but she was really wanting to move up into the multiple six figures. Mm -hmm. So we started working together on her selling strategies, her presentation, one to many. So that converted and then mastering the one on one sales conversation. And we were role playing one day and she was off and running in the process and she was explaining the nuts and bolts. And I said, whoa, wait, 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 what are you doing? And she said, well, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm telling you what I do and how it's going to work and what's going to happen. And I said, I don't really care. I told you what my problems were. Are those going to be solved? And she said, well, yes, because I'm really good at what I do. And I have all these credentials and here's my process. And I said, out of curiosity, why are you sharing all of that with me? Because she and I have had already been working together for a couple months. And so logically, that was a disconnect for, for both of us because I knew she knew not to do that. So I said, out of curiosity, why are you telling me all this, sharing all this with me? And she said, well, I, I always do. And I said, yeah, I, I, I get that in, in your conversations, right? Because we've talked about it. She said, yes. And I said, why are you doing that? And she, she got emotional and she said, I just feel like this is my only opportunity to impress them. Hmm. only opportunity to impress them. And I said, okay, so let's pull that apart a little bit. Your baseline is that you're not just impressive, you're wildly impressive. You have the credentials, you have the experience, you have the business, you have the expertise, the knowledge, the wisdom. You are impressive. So what if, instead of trying to convince me with your words about you and how impressive you are, you showed me that you were all of those things that I just said by asking me really deep questions. And when I answer those, I will know that you are impressive because nobody has ever asked me those questions before. They haven't been that deep. They haven't been that intense. They haven't required me to tell myself the truth when I was feeling uncomfortable or fearful about it. By nature of the questions that you're asking, that is going to show people that you are impressive far more than you sharing all your credentials and the stuff and how long you've been doing and your business and your modules and all of that. It's such a leap of faith, right? There's this leap of faith because we feel like that. I think especially in the transformation coaches, healers, we're here to help people do this big shift work. And I consider you transformational as well. You, we need such a big shift around this, right? So we feel like we need to make them understand or these inherent feelings of, 
worthiness and the vulnerability we have around making offers. You know, there's it's as much inner game or more most inner game as yes. having the right frameworks and tools, right? Um, so so it's very common. I think that also sometimes when we're when we've had the transformation, we're so enamored of it. Yeah. And we're so we see so much possibility that we want them to get how good our process or our method is. And it's so important to hear what Jane said about they don't care, not because they don't care about you and they don't think it's awesome. They just that it takes them, it's off topic because what they're thinking about is how can I trans how can I have this shift that I want? How can I create the life I want, the money I want, the relationship I want, right? The impact I want, whatever's motivating them. Yeah. So years ago, my IT guy was also a client. And he, I always pick on the IT people or the engineers. People, you know, people have these very logical linear kind of brains that work in that direction. Um, because this they're the most most likely to speak in this kind of language. So I know people I, I called him one day and I said, hey, Bill, um, major issue. Everything on my computer just seems to not be working. I've got three presentations this afternoon. I can't return emails. I don't know that I'm going to be able to get on camera. And I'm kind of freaking out. And he said, okay, well, open your computer. Tell me what's going on. So I did. And he said, I know exactly what's going on. And I said, okay, great. And he said, here's what's going on. Your WYSIWYG is connected to the what's what, and I got to change it from a 220i to a 220p. But then if I go over here and I do the hammer jammer and then I rewire, then I said, Bill, Bill, Bill. And he goes, what? And, so said, much. and when can you fix it? <laughs> We've worked together. You're stressing me out on top of my stress. What do you think I need to hear? And he went, Jane, give me 15 minutes. I'll have you back up online and running. You won't have any more stress. You can get on with your day with confidence. And I said, thank you that's that's it so this is that's the a brilliant point. example if Here's you're watching it. live tell, yeah. tell us that you pick that up if you come back for the replay hit pause rewind listen to that again thank you jane yeah, <laughs> yeah. so i'm gonna end this is our third myth so i'm going to end the third myth with i'll, I'll be really concise with this concept right here so here's the deal People will pay you for the work that you do, 100%. They will pay you for the work that you do, but they're investing in the problem that has arisen because of the situation. So my situation was my computer's all kinds of whacked out. It's not working. The, the problem that I'm really investing in is peace of mind, time back in my schedule, confidence when I get on camera in, in 23 minutes or whatever it was. That's what I'm investing in. I'm paying him for being a computer technician. I'm investing in peace of mind, confidence, knowing that I can go do the job that I that I'm meant to do. So oh, yeah. when you really understand that concept, you will never explain what it is that you do again in the same language. Brilliant. Because that language until this point for most of you has probably been very you focused. Mm -hmm. I do this, I help this, I work with, it's 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 I centered. And it's okay because you just haven't been taught that you it's a it's a you michelle when you work with me you will feel confident you will have clarity and right. you will have peace of mind knowing that anytime a sales calls on your calendar you're going to have excitement and enthusiasm about it how does that sound which i can vouch for being true so that's super uh so good so and it's so much such a relief right it's really not about you it's it's also one of the main tools i share in terms of being visible becoming highly visible stepping up as a leader or or owning your business charging more it's not about you it's about uh the value that you can help people to have and the results that you can help them get that's so good yeah. um let's talk all day <laughs> <laughs> If you haven't, if you've been watching, if you're watching the replay, let us know that you're here. Share your takeaways in the comments, whichever platform you're joining us from. If you're in the Facebook group, um, we do these trainings every week. You have extra early access to all kinds of goodies inside the Power Up Your Presence group. All are welcome to join us here. Um, thanks for sh uh, sharing and commenting. I want to make sure we covered everything. 
Um, I think we did uh, in terms of what I said I would promise. Jane, is there any, um, I know we have a gift to share, so I'm going to go work on the technology and, and share a little bit about, uh, you can share a little bit about that. But before we do that, is there anything that you want to add to kind of put a button on what we've covered today? We've talked about life changing conversations. Yeah. Um, maybe you want to give a little bit of a, an, inspira an inspiration rampage for us about the power of changing lives yeah. in sales conversation. Yeah. Yeah, I do. This one, one of my favorite clients, she she was a big wig in, in some corporate job. Um, she had a base salary of 350. She had bonus options. She had, you know, life was good. And this was pre-pandemic, but she took an early buyout because the company was going through some changes and, and she went home and she talked to her husband about it. And he said, yes, I think this is something you should do. Take the buyout and you go start your own consulting firm because I know that's what you want to do. And so she'd been at that for a couple of years and she and I had a conversation. I said, tell me what's going on. So she told me I'm not making enough money. I'm really having a hard time with sales conversations. All this stuff is going on. And I said, okay, well that, that makes sense. And you've been at this two years. Yes. Okay. And you were making you know, half a million plus over here in corporate. Where are you now? 40 grand. Okay, that's a significant decrease. So, uh, confidence uh, shaker there, a little right. bit of confidence shaker. Right. What's what's uh what's going what's going on? How is how is that affecting other areas of your life? And yes, yeah, she talked about her lack of confidence, and she was a rock star in corporate. And then she said, and I said, what what else? And this this is what she said, and this is really where the conversation turned. She said, um, the husband that I told you about, and I said, yeah. She said, this man. My knight in shining armor, my prince charming. We met late in life and we just, we have an understanding of how to appreciate each other in a different way because we met each other late in life. And this man said to me, you take the buyout. And this man said to me for the last two years, baby, you can do anything you put your mind to. I'm here to support you. You can do this. We would have these wonderful dates. We have this, you know, this, this torrid love affair. He's my best friend. He's the love of my life. I can't even tell you what this man means to me and what I know I mean to him. And we're starting to have conversations that, that sound like this. Um, babe, you might want to give this up. Have you thought about going back to work? Because we're really plowing through our pension here. And our date nights are significantly less fun because now we're arguing about money or he, he just doesn't believe in me. And the conversations that we have are so not romantic and so not fun. And this, this, this man was the wind beneath my wings. And at this point, I'm starting to feel like he's suppressing me and it's causing all of these issues as you might imagine. And she's really getting emotional and, and I'm, you know, I'm trying to hold it together because I'm a crier and and she said, I can't do this anymore, Jane. I don't want to give up my business. I know I can do this, but I can't do it if this man doesn't believe in me. I want my husband back. I want that relationship back. And I want our business to go because we have great things to do in this world and we need money to make that happen. And I am on a mission. And I said, okay. So we had the rest of the conversation. She did, be a, she did sign up to be a client. Now, here's the thing. I am in no way, Christine, if Christine's still, Christine's still on this call, she can vouch for this. I had to hire Christine as my dating relationship coach and probably will again in the future. I am in no way, no way qualified to provide any kind of relationship advice to somebody, let alone think that I'm going to be some type of catalyst for somebody's marriage getting put back together. I am single. I have never been married. I still haven't figured it out. So somebody investing dollars in me to help them save their marriage is probably one of the worst decisions they could ever make. But here's the thing. She was investing in what she needed to have happen, which is what I just mentioned a minute ago. She was paying me for the work that I do. What's the work that I do? I helped her create different selling strategies, helped her master the one-on-one -on -one conversation. We turned all of that around. She started bringing in money for her business. Her business is now soaring. And now she gets to go into her husband and go, two tickets to Bermuda, you up? You know, so did that not change their life? This is, this is what I mean. Sale, sales and selling conversations are so profound. They are so deep and they really do change the world. One person at a time, one conversation at a time. And you don't know the ripple effect that the work that you do is having on your clients and then therefore having on the world. And that's why I think selling is a noble profession. I'm hearing nothing. Are you muted? 
Oh, sorry, my little button got pushed. Uh, that's the opportunity that we're leaving on the table when we avoid the sales conversation or we don't ask those deeper questions or we don't actually decide to get good at it, right? It's we are really leaving uh, people without the solution. Same thing when we're marketing and getting visible and sharing our message. If we don't show up and share, then there may be somebody who needed to hear it today that doesn't hear it. Yep. And so it's really powerful. Jane, I'm going to um, share. Will you tell us a little bit about this gift that you have given us? Thank you. Yes, thank you. Tell you about and then two pieces of homework, because I always like to leave. It's, it's home fun because I don't do anything if it's work. So we got to have. Excellent. We are Excellent. So the selling success party pack are a combination of uh, it's a combination of aud audios. Yes. Audios and downloadable fun sheets. And there are. I think there are three different groupings in there, but it's very comprehensive. Really what this is, is a combination of several of my freebie offers that I have been offering over the years. So I just put it all together. And Ooh, now it's a nice juicy oh, bundle. Now it's, it's a bundle. So it's a selling part, party pack. So you will get that. If you go to, well, the link is right there. Also, I did. I posted it in the group and it's posted, I think on both other places. I'll make sure it gets everywhere, but yeah. I also would really recommend you go to showstoppingsales.com and in the right hand corner, there's something that says midweek sales tweak. If you enter your email address there, you're going to get every Wednesday a, a, a one or two sentence meme and then a video that's an expansion of that meme. These, Mike, I've been doing this for over 10 years. The open rate on it, if anybody knows anything about open rates, great open rates, 20, you know, 17 is mm -hmm. respectable. Anything over 20, it's your, whoa, you know, 55% yep. is my consistent open rate on the midweek tweaks. They're so easy. They take less than three minutes and it's like food for your soul when it comes to the world of sales. So and we need it. Sales and being in business and growing as a business owner and have putting our message out there and showing up and being visible is an expansion process. It's vulnerable. Your vulnerability is your superpower. And we need nourishment. We, we need, need nourishment. Unity. Yeah. We yeah. need guidance. We need yeah. encouragement. We need a safe place to land. And so I know we're a little longer than we plan to be, but I want to just also say, you guys, if this has been valuable, comment, like, share your takeaways, invite other people to watch it, get Jane's gift. And I know that Jane has a, a, a high level, small group, powerful training process that she takes clients through to really embrace the sales process from this, what I would call inside out approach. Yeah. Yeah. And so if she, if you're, if you know that you're stuck here, uh, please do private message Jane, get her gift, reach out, get on her schedule to find out how you can join her next level sales salon. It's a pow I just had a thought as an extra, as an extra little thing here. Um, let's do this. The first three people, I was thinking threes, the first three people who send me an email, jane at showstoppingsales.com, and I want you to put the word explore in there, and I am going to give you a complimentary ticket to a workshop and then a 15-minute consultation. And it really is a consultation, so it's not a sales call. It's a consultation. <laughs> How about that? First you like that? I didn't tell you about Jane that. Jane at showstoppingsales.com. Jane at showstoppingsales.com. Uh, uh, with the word what? Explore. Explore in the subject line? Yep. That's it. That's all you have to put. Gets a consult. And yep. something else you said. Workshop. I'm going to give you a compliment. Oh, you got the workshop. You guys, and a free ticket to yep. the upcoming workshop. I'm typing as fast as I can, you guys. Add banner show. Look at the technology. First three to email oh, Jane it. at showstoppingsales.com. I don't even think there was a typo in that email address. One With second. the word explore in the subject line gets a consult and a free ticket to her upcoming workshop. You guys, there's there's no reason not to do that. I know there's still at least 
six, nine people here. Um, so uh, I encourage you to take advantage of that and, and go play with Jane. Thank you so much for being in my world. I love having you in our SOAR yeah. collective and uh, the Dare to SOAR community. And uh, uh, I love having had the benefit of having your support and in my life as well. Um, uh, and you guys, never the same. You'll never be the same after this training. That is and, so true. Uh, you can shift um, your perspective. And, and I know that for those of you who've watched or come back and watch the replay that you have already made a big shift today. So congratulations on taking the time to be here. Jane, thank you. Mm, ah, love you. I know yeah. I'll see you soon. Thank you for being here and being a part of our uh Give voice to your vision. I will see you guys next week. I may pop in for a secret training tomorrow uh, because Thursday's our regular day just inside my Power Up Your Presence group. Stay tuned. Come back. Find out. We'll see. And uh, thank you for being here, Jane, sharing your brilliance. We'll see you on the next episode. Bye, Bye guys.